HH may end up being a life president. Remember to subscribe, share, and like the video. In September 11, 2021, John Sangwa State Council wrote, The 2021 general election and the possible emergence of a dominant political party and life president introduction. The 12th August 2021 general election was held in an imperfect environment, and yet the outcome is so perfect that it is hard to believe that it is a product of voters that were voting independent of each other and in secret. To avoid a second ballot and all the attendant uncertainties, the voters gave 14, 14 opposition political parties 2.2-1% of the votes cast, which was exceeded by the rejected votes of 2.55%. Former President Edgar Lungu, ECL, received 37.72% of the votes, while President Hakainde Hichilema, HH, received 57.51%, making it impossible for ECL to challenge the results. ECL and HH received a total 95.24% of the votes cast. Whilst the outcome of the presidential election is absolute, the same cannot be said about the parliamentary election. The Patriotic Front, PF, headed by ECL, won 38% of the seats, while the new ruling party, the United Party for National Development, UPND, headed by HH, secured 53% of the seats. The independent candidates combined won 8% of the seats. The people gave UPND enough votes to push through its economic policies and govern the country, but they denied it the two-thirds majority required to alter the constitutional framework or to sanction the criminal prosecution of ECL as former president. Similarly, even PF working together with all the independent members of the National Assembly cannot undermine the UPND government. In a world where democracy has been in regression, the outcome of the Zambian election has renewed hope in the democratic experiment. It is being studied by both pro-democracy movements and undemocratic governments, especially in Africa. Opposition parties on the continent want to understand how Zambians secured such a spectacular electoral outcome, and oppressive governments have the same interest but for different reasons – to ensure that what happened to ECL and the PF does not happen in their own countries. This workshop, which is titled Review of the 2021 General Election and Challenges Facing the UPND Government, is therefore very opportune. As we celebrate the outcome of this election and the resultant improved standing of Zambia as a democracy, possibly with no equal on the African continent, the celebrations must be tempered by the reality of what we may have unintentionally. Paper presented at CPD FES Post-Election Workshop, Review of the 2021 General Elections and Challenges Facing the UPND Government, Protea Chisamba Lodge, Chisamba, 9. 12th September 2021, created through the ballot. There is a possibility that Zambia has birthed a political party, UPND, that is likely to be in power longer than any other in history, and a president, HH, who is likely to be the de facto life president. The 12 August 2021 general election is likely to the last democratic election in Zambia for a long time to come. The very election that renewed our faith in the democratic experiment is likely to kill or undermine it. There are a number of factors that have led to this dark possible conclusion, which I have explored below. The rise of HH as possible life president trauma inflicted on the people by ECL and PF makes HH the messiah. The trauma of living in a near-failed state characterized by economic and social collapse caused by mismanagement, wastage, corruption, incompetence, and in certain instances, blatant theft of public resources at all levels of government is real. Any president that rescues the electorates from such a traumatic existence is likely to be viewed as a messiah. To a savior, there may be no strict adherence to the constitutional term limit, the debate around such a messianic presidency is likely to be why he should not continue in office, but not why he should stay in office beyond his term. Instead of laws being respected, they may be lawfully amended to permit his continued stay in power. There is already an example of such a president in Africa in the form of Paul Kagame of Rwanda. Whilst the Rwanda genocide cannot be compared to what Zambians experienced under ECL, Nonetheless, the ravages of ECL's rule still has an enduring impact on Zambians. 
Some Zambians have remarked that they feel liberated. They are free once again. The electorates will embrace any leader that frees them from such misery. All the ingredients for the possible emergence of a de facto life president are present. Weak institutions. ECL and PF did not just leave behind a collapsed economy, but also a weak constitutional order, which may favor the rise of HH as a de facto life president. The combination of an economy destroyed by corruption, mismanagement and wastage, and constitutional and statutory institutions and offices run by unqualified and corrupt individuals gives HH a free reign in the design of his agenda, which prioritizes the damage caused by ECL and PF, whose scale is yet to be determined. The holders of the corrupt institutions at all levels of government having debased themselves to serve ECL lack the moral capacity to check on HH. In the face of the strong mandate given to HH by the electorate, their continued stay in their respective offices is dependent on HH. They are ready and willing to serve the new head of state and government to atone for their misdeeds for their own personal survival. A traumatized people desperate for any improvement in their lives may see no harm in changing the law to allow HH continue in office beyond the two five years limit. To such a people, the departure of HH may mean the possible return to the dark days of lawlessness and plunder of public resources by ECL and FP. HH used his money to gain political power. There are unique qualities that HH possesses, which may cause the people to trust him to stay in power for as long as he may desire. He is the only person, although the extent of his financial wealth is unknown, who was not poor going to office of president. All his predecessors were poor at the time of assuming the office of president, and used political power to gain some measure of wealth or financial comfort. On the other hand, H.H. has used his wealth to gain political power. In fact, the quest for the presidency has been at a great financial cost to him personally. He can legitimately claim to have ascended to the office of president to serve the people. H.H.'s focus on the presidency, also to be factored in this equation, is his single-mindedness in seeking the presidency. It legitimizes his claim to serve the people. No president has spent as much time as leader of an opposition political party as H.H. UNIP was founded in 1959, and in January 1964, Kaunda, its president, became prime minister and president on 24 October 1964. The founding of Movement for Multi-Party Democracy, MMD, in 1990, and election of Chiluba as president in 1991, was an historical event birthed by internal and external factors, which cannot as an example. President Wanawasa was an anointed successor of President Chiluba. President Banda was a person in the right place, at the right place, following the demise of President Wanawasa. The ascension of Sata to the office of president arose in response to President Chiluba choosing Mwanawasa as his successor. Sata was in opposition for 10, 10 years, and his pursuit for the presidency had no clear agenda other than to prove that, like Kaunda, Chiluba, and Mwanawasa, he could also be president of Zambia. H.H. was in opposition for more than 15, 15 years before being sworn into office as the seventh president of Zambia. During that period, he turned down a union with President Mwanawasa in 2006 general election. He equally refused to work in an alliance with President Banda in the general election of 2011. The offer by Sada for H.H. to be his deputy in an alliance for the purpose of 2011 general election did not dissuade him from his mission to be president of Zambia on his terms. He instead countered that he should be the president of the alliance with Sada as his vice president despite the PF holding more seat in the National Assembly than UPND. His refusal to succumb to these offers shows his disdain for opportunism and legitimizes his claim to serve the people. Therefore, unlike ECL and PF who had a parasitic relationship with the people, HH is likely to have a symbiotic relationship with the people. He may remain in the office of president as long as he satisfies the needs of the people that elected him. Once the needs of the people are met, the debate three is likely to be why the Constitution should be amended to remove the term limit and not why the Constitution should be respected. The possible rise of UPND as a dominant political party, political fatigue. 
Since the return to the multi-party constitutional order in 1991, more political parties have been created than in any other period in the life of the Republic. However, most of them are defunct, and of those that have survived the majority are briefcase political parties, then viable political parties likely to threaten UPND's hold on power. The voters are tired of such political parties, and the proof of that lies in the fact that the presidential candidates of the 14, 14 political parties combined received 2.2% of the votes cast in the 2021 general election and the 1-1 one, one seat, which is essentially a UPND seat. It is therefore unlikely, should HH and the UPND meet their campaign promises to the people, that in the next 10 years that a political party will emerge that is likely to challenge the UPND. Stay tuned for part two.